one of the most useful applications for finding the mean of a frequency distribution as we've been doing in this section is for students to be able to calculate their grades. Now this particular one is going to be of a relative frequency distribution. So if you have a professor who writes a syllabus that has something like this, where different categories of assignments fall into different percentages, that's a relative frequency distribution because it's going to use percents or decimals. Like that. So it uses percents or decimals. Now if you have an instructor who uses points, and they'll say, you know, this is worth 200 points, this is worth 300 points, etc. They're doing the same thing, it's just it's not relative. <laughs> it's a frequency distribution then. Alright, so we have a syllabus value or syllabus values here for classwork, my stat lab projects, and so on. And we're going to um, use those values to figure out the grade for this student, Larry. So Larry wants to calculate his grade in his statistics class during the week before taking his final exam. Larry has received a score of 70.8% on his midterm exam, 74.3% on his projects. His online, that's my stat lab right there, my stat lab homework is 35.4% and his classwork has a score of 90.6%. Alright, so let's just start with the categories. So classwork, my stat lab, I'm just putting them in the same order that they were written in the syllabus. You could put them actually in any order you like. Although I would urge you to put the final at the bottom because the final is the grade that we have to mess with the most here. Okay, so we have those particular categories. And then we have the relative frequency. We, we know this is point 0.2, this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2, this is point 0.25, and this is 0.25. And then we know Larry's particular grades. So classwork was a 90.6. My stat lab was a 35.4. Projects were 74.3. And the midterm was a 70.8. OK. So you could rightly be asking me, why did I do decimals for one and percentages written as whole numbers kind of over here for the other? And the answer is eh, no particular reason. I wanted to show you relative frequency. I wanted to show using decimals over here. So that's why I use the decimals. Over here in the grades portion, if you use decimals and decimals, it'll be really decimal heavy when you get to your answers. So I just thought that would be a little confusing. So I'm just using the, um, writing these percentages as if they're whole numbers, if you will. So writing them as, um, as they're written. Okay, so the question becomes, what's the highest grade Larry can receive in this class? So keep in mind, these are your X values. These are your weights. They're the relative frequency for each of those categories, right? So we could mess around with doing this by hand. We could multiply and do that, um, but it would be tedious because everything's with decimals everywhere. So we're going to use StatCrunch to help us. But we want to think about the highest and lowest grade possible for Larry. So the highest grade, now keep in mind, this is before the final. So the highest grade would be to give Larry a final exam of 100%. And the lowest grade would be to give Larry a final grade of 0. But they never show up for that exam. Alright, so that's what we'll do. So we're going to go to StatCrunch and we're going to find the mean as we have been doing because your grade in a class is the mean. Matter of fact, maybe I should say that <laughs> somewhere. So let me just write note. Grade is the mean, right? The weighted mean, I should say. The weighted mean. Um, and that's true for all of your classes. It's just that sometimes they do the weights with percentages, sometimes they do them with points, but your grade is your weighted mean. All right, so let me go grab StatCrunch. I don't know if I put this in. Let me see. I think I did. So if I look up Oh, let me again, let me show you how I'm doing that. So on the main screen, I'm going to data sets, and I type grade calculation. 
and there it is, Math 133, Chapter 3, Grade Calculation. And I've actually put Larry's grades in and the relative frequencies, just to make things easier for ourselves. And I can make this a little bigger so we can see. I do that by moving my cursor to the line between um, where it says Assignment, Category, and Grade, and then I just kind of drag. It becomes this double-sided arrow. All right, so I could put 100 in here, or I could put 0 in here, and I could find both of those grades. Now here's the kicker. Because these are relative frequencies, we cannot use the normal thing we've been doing. I'll show you. If I try to use stat, summary stat, grouped bind, I tell it the bins are my grades, and I tell it the counts are the relative frequency, and I want the mean, it won't do it. It says the, account and the counts must be integers. Boo. Okay, so there's got to be another way. And there is. Right. What we're going to do is a different technique in StatCrunch that we haven't done before. It's mentioned on the instructions page for the technology, right back here. For a relative frequency distribution, oops, hold on, let me show you the page. For a relative frequency distribution, in other words, when we're working with decimals, we have to go stat calculators custom. So we've been doing grouped bin to this whole time for section 3.3. Three. So for sections 3.1 and 3.2, we were always doing this, stat, summary, stat, columns. No problem. For section 3.3, three, we were doing stat, summary, stat, grouped bind when their whole numbers are the frequencies. But if they're decimals, if their weights are relative frequencies, then we have to use this. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me go back to StatCrunch. And I'm going to go to Stat, Calculators, Custom. My values are my grades. My weights are rather obviously my relative frequency and then I click Compute. And it gives you this big picture, which you don't really need, but what you do need is the mean. The mean right there is 79.22. That's the highest grade that Larry could possibly get in this class. All right, so let me, I gotta close this window, and apparently this one too. <laughs> They're blocking my view. All right, so the highest grade he could get is a 79.2% which if we go back up and look, 79.2 actually is a 2.5, right close to the border, but it is a 2.5. Right, both of those things are an answer because one of them is the grade percentage wise and one is the grade in the course that um, contributes to your GPA. All right, so let's go do it again but give him a zero. So let's go to here, type zero for that final exam. And you could kick, hit, click options refresh, there it is, but if you want to practice again, it's stat, calculators, custom, grade, and relative frequency, click compute, 54.22, which is a 0, 0.0. All right, so 54.2% which is 0, 0.0. So if he doesn't show up to take the final, he's going to get a 0. And if he shows up and gets 100%, he would get a 2.5. This is a very important calculation to be able to know how to do for yourself, right? How do I figure out what my highest grade in the class is, my lowest grade in the class? You can do this as you approach the final exam. All right, we need to write down instructions for ourselves. Um, and then we'll deal with the 2.0. So let's write a little stat crunch note. So when working with relative frequency, uh, let's make note. The stat crunch path is stat calculators. This one's going to come back to haunt you. Well, we will see this again. This is not our only time seeing this. This will come back in Chapter 6. Because the relative frequencies are decimals. Because they're decimals, that's the path we have to use. So you want to make a note to yourself about it. There are three ways to find the mean with StatCrunch. There's the regular stat columns way that we've been doing through chapter three, most of it. Then there's the grouped bind way, which we can use when the frequencies are whole numbers. And then there's this stat calculators custom way that we use when the frequencies are relative frequencies, when they're decimals. 
be a, an important thing to say to put on a note sheet for an exam. Just putting that out there. Okay, so now what's the minimum grade to have on the final or that he needs to have on the final to earn a 2.0? This question every instructor gets. <laughs> what's the minimum I need to pass, right? Okay, so a 2.0 is a 70% or higher, right? So what we're trying to figure out is how to give Larry a 70% or higher overall grade. Okay, well, I mean, honestly, there's there's a algebra way to do this. It involves, you know, an equation with an X in it and all that good stuff. But we can just trial and error, <laughs> right? So let's try trial and error. All right, what that means in mathematics is you try different numbers and you get errors until, and then you correct yourself until you get the right number. Simple as that, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to StatCrunch and we're going to try a bunch of numbers. All right, so let's try giving Larry a, well, we know a zero won't work. What about a 50? So I'm going to hit options, refresh. Well, that gave him a 66.72, not high enough. All right, so let's try a 55. Upon this many, <laughs> this trial and error method, um, many prices right games are, <laughs> are built, you know, higher or lower. So let's try a 60. Options, refresh. Oh, we're getting really close. A 60 gave us a 69.22. So let's try 65. And then, oh, options, I don't know what I'm doing. Options, refresh. Okay, that's over, so that's good. So 65 will do it. What about 64? Because we want the minimum number. 64 is 70.22. Let's try 63. Nope, there it is. Okay, so we need a 64. So 64 is the high or the lowest number that 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 Larry could score on that exam and still get a 2.0 in the course. So trial and error. So we tried it, and then 64% on the final. is the minimum grade needed. To receive a 2.0. I'm going to briefly touch on this with a TI-84, but if you're not using a TI-84, you can just skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI-84s, you actually have, this is the one thing that a TI-84 does better than StatCrunch. All right, so you go to Stat, Edit, you type in the values. So 90.6, 35.4, 74.3, 70.8. I'm just going to put in the 100 so we can see that, but you saw how to do this. It's, it's a bunch of... Um, messing around with the calculations and playing around with different numbers for that final exam. So we go to stat, calculate one variable, and just as before, you do list one and list two. That way it puts it all together and makes it run it together. And you can see there's the 79.22 up there. So this is one thing that is not different between frequencies and relative frequencies for the TI-84. It's one of the few things that a TI-84 does a little bit better than StatCrunch. So enjoy it, because it's not going to last. <laughs>